Mr. Clayman. Ms. Gray Jackson. Honored to be here. Mr. Gutierrez. Here. Mr. Flynn. Present. Ms. Johnston. Here. Ms. Drummond. Here. Dr. Selkraig. Here. Mr. Birch. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Mr. Clayman, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag. We have minutes from some of our previous meetings. First is February 16. Move the minutes of the meeting of February 16. Buttons, please. So moved and seconded. Are there any recommended changes to the minutes? Is there any objection to approving the minutes? Seeing and hearing none, that item is approved. That brings us to the minutes of the March 2nd meeting. Move the meeting, uh, minutes of the meeting of March 2nd. Second. And as soon as I can, I will. Understood. Okay, are there any suggested changes to the amendment, to the minutes? Is there any objection to the minutes as presented? Seeing and hearing none, those are approved. That brings us to the minutes of March 16. Move the minutes of the meeting of March 16. Is there any recommended changes to the minutes? Is there any objection to the minutes? Seeing and hearing none, that item is approved. That brings us to the mayor's report. Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick report. I think everybody saw the news Cass and, and the reports on uh, the activity in Juneau. And I just want to take a moment to thank everyone, certainly in my staff, uh, uh, Stacy Schubert and Larry Baker and uh, all the other people that helped put the legislative program together and certainly the Assembly for endorsing the legislative program. And we did very, very well in Juneau on, on all fronts. And so it's going to be a very robust uh, uh, capital budget and uh, there are other items in there as well, particularly dealing with energy, and I'll let Mr. Coffey probably address that more from the Energy Committee standpoint. But uh, again, thank all of you uh, for your help with the legislative package. Very well received this year. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Osiander. Mr. Mayor, is it possible to get a copy of the capital budget? Absolutely. It's online now. Oh, um, it is? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but we can get you a hard copy too if you'd like. So, Mr. Gutierrez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would you could you tell us, in brief, efforts to encourage the governor not to wield his veto pen towards Anchorage? The, uh, we're going to try and get together with the governor as soon as possible and uh, go over uh, what he's thinking. Just find out what he's thinking first, uh, and and see if we can't uh, maybe suggest some areas that would be least impactful to us. And uh, I know to really make any dent in a, a budget that's in the billions, you know you're probably going to have to look at some big-ticket items, and there are certainly ones for Anchorage, the port at $20 million, the crime lab, $75 million, uh, the, the school or the uh, university sports. And, you know, some of those are going on bonds, and so I mean, he may want to leave the bonds alone. But we're definitely going to have that discussion as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. Um, for the Chair's report, just a few items with regards to this evening's agenda. Um, first off, Item 9, Echo 3, the Ombudsman's Report. We're going to hold that over to our next meeting so Ms. Kata can address the entire body with the new members seated uh, and give them the opportunity to ask any questions they may have. Um, I believe we'll be pulling uh, Item 9, F7, to discuss a potential conflict that will be addressed at a later meeting. And finally, I believe on Item 9, Bravo 1, it's on your uh, addendum. I believe Mr. Starr is interested in referring that to the Budget Advisory Commission. Um, other than that, uh, we have some members leaving tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask that everybody wait to make their comments until the conclusion of the consent agenda, and then we'll go in order and give everyone a chance to say all the wonderful things about the fine people, folks who will be missing for the next several years. Final item, Mr. Birch, would you kindly come to the center of the dais? Would you please come this way, sir? The honor of presenting a congratulatory letter from Mayor Sullivan April 19 marked the fifth anniversary of Mr. Birch's service to the municipality of Anchorage. Mr. Birch, thank you very much for your service. With that, we're on to committee reports. And Mr. Birch, you get to go first. I have no uh, committee reports. Thank you, sir. Dr. Selkraig. I have no committee reports. Thank you, Dr. Selkraig. Ms. Drummond, sorry. <laughs> no report. Ms. Johnston. No report. Mr. Gutierrez. No report, Mr. Chair. Ms. Ray Jackson. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Clayman. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Anchorage Airport Communications Committee met on the 7th of April to uh, talk about plans for the future. And one of the things they asked was that, that I at least participate in scheduling the next meeting and planning the next meeting so that uh, we could engage in an orderly transition uh, to my no longer participating on that committee, at least in the role of a member of the Anchorage the Assembly from West Anchorage. So that has been scheduled for May 26th. It's a Wednesday from noon to 1 at the airport. And I know Mr. Hall is in the audience. By, by the way, the committee is created. You will be the, the new member, so you should put that on your calendar for noon on Wednesday, the 26th of May. I see him right now. Thank you, Mr. Clement. Mr. Starr. No report. Thank you, Mr. Starr. Ms. Osiander. And Mr. Coffey. Yeah, two quick things on the Energy Task Force. First, uh, tomorrow is a meeting. The, uh, we're going to get a report from um, ConocoPhillips and Marathon, and they have filed renewal applications for the Ling plant. And if anybody's curious about all the details, that is at 9 o'clock in the mayor's conference room. May 5th is another meeting, uh, and the, uh, that has, there's been a lot of things in play there. As the mayor mentioned some of the uh, money that's coming out of Juno relative to some interim look at the um, alternative to Gretzi. If you recall, the Gretzi legislation with the rail belt utilities did not pass. There are still concerns that drove the beginnings of the reasons for Gretzi, uh, and there are solutions that may work for all of us, and that discussion will start, at least from the city's perspective, on May 5th with the arrival of some folks who have set up uh, solutions to similar problems in Canada uh, and Puerto Rico. That's it for the energy. Thank you, Mr. Coffey. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to, Mr. 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 Coffey, I deferred. Uh, you may want to mention quickly about 280 and 309 and, you know, the impact they had because the task force certainly endorsed those. And yeah, uh, the, uh, the storage bill and the incentive bills both passed the legislature. Uh, and uh, storage is key to us for two reasons. Number one, if there ever is a pipeline, uh, to keep the flow going, we're going to need storage because of our tremendous variations in demand from summer to winter. And secondly, uh, we're going to need to be able to move from this year through the time it might take to build such a line. Um, and so the desire has been to incentivize production and discovery in Cook Inlet, uh, knowing full well that it's costly, it's risky, and um, but if we don't have it, then we're going to be importing liquefied natural gas. We may very well be doing that anyway, given the costs and the risk of exploration and the difficulty of getting a long-term return. So we are in a period of time when our energy costs will probably escalate. And the two things that the legislature did were designed to ensure we have energy and to hopefully reduce the cost to the, to the consuming public. We'll see how effective they are over the course of the next two or three years with the drilling programs. but. Uh, I do know that NSTAR is proceeding with the storage capacity and, you know, there's discussions ongoing with others who may need the capacity and so on. So it's an ongoing project and uh, uh, it will be another one of the things that the folks that are coming up from Canada are going to be willing to talk to the NSTAR people about come the 5th of May. So, um, and I would, I would urge, this is in leaving here, I would urge the body to have someone, some of the, you know, one of the 11 of you somebody be appointed to come to that uh, task force because it's just crucial without, you know, silly, without heat and lights, none of, nothing else really much matters, you know. <laughs> so thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Coffey. We have an addendum to the agenda. Great. Second. Buttons, please. Thank you very much. Is there objection to incorporating the addendum? Yeah. Seeing and hearing none, I'll read it real briefly. Item 9, Bravo 1, Resolution AR 2010-127, a resolution of Anchorage Municipal Assembly establishing parameters for a joint work group to establish guidelines for the implementation of managed competition and delivery of municipal services and to identify opportunities prior to assembly consideration of the FY 2011 General Government Operating Budget. With that, we have the consent agenda before us. Move Mr. To, move to approve. Second. Thank you very much. We have moved and seconded. We'll uh, take up. Items to pull. Mr. Coffey. Nothing. Thank you, sir. Ms. Osiander. Nine Delta Four. Thank you, Ms. Osiander. Do you want to pull the nine Delta Three for me? And nine E three. Thank you very much. Echo three, that is correct. Mr. Starr. Uh, nine Bravo One. Thank you, Mr. Starr. 
Mr. Clayman. Nothing. Ms. Ray Jackson. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gutierrez. Nine Foxtrot seven. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. And Ms. Johnston. Nothing, thank you. Nothing, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnston. Ms. Drummond. Nothing, thank you, Mr. Chair. And Dr. Selkred. Nothing, thank you. And Mr. Birch. Uh, no items. Thank you very much. Items I have pulled are nine Bravo one on the addendum. Item nine Delta four. Item nine Echo three. And item nine Foxtrot seven. Did I miss any? All right. Is there objection to adopting the agenda? Uh, agenda. Consent agenda. Save those items. Seeing, hearing none, the consent agenda is adopted. That brings us to item 9, Bravo 1. Mr. Starr. I'd like to move to postpone this action to June 22nd with a referral to the Budget Advisory Commission. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to postpone to June 22nd with a referral to the Budget Advisory Commission. Is there objection to that motion? Seeing and hearing none, that motion is approved. That brings us to item 9, Delta 4. Ms. Osiander. Move to approve. Second. We'll get your buttons in front of you here in a moment. Ms. Osiander. Um, I, did, we did get um, one of the questions answered, which indicated to me how, again, how heavily this is dependent on serving the folks in the valley. Um, I noted in the response that there were three vans that are going back and forth between Girdwood. Are there any um, hindrances in place to keep, that keep these from being used in the Chugiak Eagle River area? Is there any criteria for application on this that favors you if you live in Wasilla? I see Ms. Carr is coming down. We'll let her answer that question. Hello, I'm Jody Cars, Public, tra Public Transportation Director, um, through the Chair, Ms. Osiander. There is nothing that, um, there are no requirements that people have to live um, a certain distance away or in the mat. So really it's a function of commuting, how far people are commuting, because there are fixed costs associated with a van pool. And the longer distance someone's traveling, the more cost effective it is to be a farther distance. Now we have worked with our van pool contractor to come up with a rate in the event we did, did get a van pool that could be formed from Eagle River. It's a little less than a, than a farther commute, but so far we haven't had a lot of interest in it. My understanding is that the people who get into this program only really have to pay the mileage. There's something beyond that? Well, it's, they're, they're paying their insurance, they're paying the um, maintenance, they're paying fuel. So, so it, it is, when you take the cost of insurance and you spread it out between 100 miles, it's, it's more cost effective than if you spread it out between 20 or 30 miles. Ms. Kars, as you know, we, we've been struggling to try to find alternatives for local transportation since the elimination of those two bus routes. Yes. And uh, there are two things that I've been interested in promoting. One is the use of these van pools in, in lieu of the bus routes. And the other thing is better coordination with the van services from the valley. Um, I guess the best thing to do is for me to just come into your office and sit down and talk about this. Absolutely. Because you already, it sounds like, are you trying to work something to make this more usable that, inside that the... One of our goals is how can we possibly make the cost a little lower than, you know, other costs that we could, could tweak um, in order to make it more cost effective for Eagle River riders. You know, the Eagle River rider may pay $50 for a monthly bus pass on People Mover, or they may have to pay $80, $80 in a van pool um, versus 110 I think, for Matsu, 120 from Matsu. Unless they're no longer on a bus route, and then That's it becomes more attractive. Ex exactly. Okay. Just but one piece of information. You know, it's, it's interesting with the van pool, you really need to have a good, good, um, commute that works, you need to have a good population. We've been struggling in Girdwood to get people interested in van pulling from Girdwood into town. Uh -huh. And that's, that's been a struggle. Well, I think a lot of people I've talked to have never even heard of this. I, I had a conversation just yesterday with a group of people that, that were clueless this was even an option. Right. One last question. We've had a substantial waiting list for this in the past. 
Does that still exist? The wilderness ebbs and flows. Um, when gas prices are really high, um, we get more people. When we actually have vans that we can get out, you know, it's, it's a kind of a balancing act between having vans available versus having an overabundant supply. So when we get vans, right now we don't have any extras to, to throw out into the community. Uh, well, we just got 10 in, um, so we will start marketing it. Right now, there are probably about three or 400 people on the wait list. It's been up at one point, it was about six or 700 people. But we keep working, we, we call the wait list, we fit, put them into vacancies that are already out there, but we really only do a heavy marketing when we have vehicles available. Because we, you don't want to market something if you don't have vehicles to put them into. And the Matt Valley folks are actually participating now in trying to apply for these grants and support it financially, right? Absolutely. We're partnering with the Matsu Borough. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see no else in the queue. Thank you, Ms. Cars. Is there objection to uh, adoption of this item? Seeing and hearing none, it is approved. That brings us to item 9, Echo 3. I have a motion to postpone, please. Move to postpone. To, to the 27th, right? That's okay. Good. Buttons, please, Mr. Clayman. Thank you. Is there objection to postponing this item to April 27? Seeing and hearing none, Ms. Cato, we'll see you next week. That brings us to item 9, Foxtrot 7. Ms. Gray Jackson, please. Move to introduce. Second. Third. Mr. Gutierrez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I pulled this item um, just in an abundance of caution to potentially declare a conflict. This uh, Wonder Park is my neighborhood, and several parts of this project are happening around my home. None of them are, are I think, in front of my house or on my street, but <clears throat> will probably impact my property value in one way or another. So I thought it best in, again, an abundance of caution to let the body know that when this comes before us again, I will declare a potential conflict and let the body rule, and I will cede to your wishes. Thank you very much, Mr. Gutierrez. Thank we'll you. try and get more details from uh, AWW. And I will be working with AWW and Mr. Primo on that. Very, Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to the conclusion of the consent agenda. So with that, I'm... Oh, I'm, I apologize. I, I should have mentioned that item 9, Fox Trot 7, is not scheduled for public hearing until May 11th. Thank you, Madam Clerk, for the reminder. Um, so with that, prior to our recessing, in order to take up our special orders and certification election, I would offer members the opportunity to say a few words of departure to our colleagues. And we'll start with Mr. Birch. Well, it's, uh, it's been a... Uh, uh, an interesting year, or actually an interesting couple of years, and uh, uh, in, you know, I have to say that uh, these uh, Tuesday evenings, you, you gain a, a great deal of insight into your, your neighbors and colleagues on the assembly, and I, I, for one, have very much enjoyed the opportunity to get to know uh, uh, Mr. Clayman better, a uh, uh, handshake before every meeting. I, I, I forget exactly where that came from. I think it was a Supreme Court justice or something, if, if, if I recall, but uh, uh, if, if that's uh, been uh, always appreciated, uh, and uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, Mr. Coffee. I, I understand. Uh, I, I didn't see a, a who the, who it came from, but I, I do have a mug here. I understand that was a gift from Mr. Coffee as a parting gift. Thank you very much, Mr. Purchased Coffee. Purchased from your son-in-law too. Just to be Excellent. safe, right? Excellent. <laughs> All right. You want to declare a conflict, Mr. Coffee? <laughs> And, uh, and and last but not least, uh, uh, Ms. Selkraig. It's uh, been very nice uh, uh, being seated with you out here and, uh, and kind of kibitzing and uh, talking about uh, uh, issues that have come before the body as, uh, as we've deliberated and uh, heard public testimony over the past year. So uh, anyway, we'll miss you all. And I, I know you'll be watching this on uh, Tuesday evenings. Uh, and it's, it is taped uh, in case you miss it and you want to come back. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Burke. Dr. Selkraig. Um, I, I have a couple things. I actually made some notes. I, I want to start out by saying thank you. It has been an honor to serve with this body and serve this community. And I want to thank the citizens of East Anchorage who elected me and the citizens of this community who have interacted and been here and stood up for their ideas. It's just been great to be part of the decision body that got to interact with this community. I also want to thank the municipal employees. It's, 
a, been a wonderful experience to work with such hard-working, um, dedicated public servants. Consistently, I've gotten information. I've also seen our public employees stand up for ideas that are agreed on in terms of our plans and uh, you know they have to deal with new administrations and new new people constantly and I think they chart that center course that they're hired to do really well and I wanted to address that and say thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to the press who has sat here day and night and hangs out with us until 11 o'clock at night and does their best to reflect what we've done and I think that they're an important part of what makes our democracy work and I think there's some young people and some older people that manage to, to build the message and it's, it really matters. Um, I want to th thank Heather Ireland who was my aide all through this and has been very helpful and my friends and families. A family, and I also want, just want to make two comments that I, when I thought about serving here, that really mattered in terms of the things I've learned that are so important, I think, to government and serving. And first is the importance of a civil society, and at times that that's been challenging. At times, it's hard to remember that not only for the public but for us as as assembly people and as elected officials. But um, I think we've we've worked at that and I think it's something that we have to continue to work at. It's so important today where we've got people so angry about things that we pause and remember that our democracy's really born in tolerance for one another's ideas and um, I just can't uh, say enough about that but I won't say another word about that. One last thing. Um, as I've sat here, I, I think it's really important for us to remember when we are making decisions that it's really essential that we make decisions that anchor us in a community dream about a great community, about where we want to go. Um, it, you know, they become day-to-day -day decisions, but if we're not moving towards something that we've defined as great community, we're really not serving the public and we're really not serving our children. Uh, and I, I think we have tools that we create in our system, our community plans, our public testimony, um, the, the things that we agree on is uh, charting our direction. I think it's very, very important that we remember what those, those documents are and we remember what those goals are. Um, and if they're, if they're no longer vital and real that we revisit them with this community and make sure that we understand clearly where we want to go because it's so essential to be building a community that our children want to live in and a, ch a community that offers a future. And if we don't focus on making things happen, oftentimes we're engaged with what we don't want to have happen. Um, it's really important that we shape um, a, a future that um, is a good community and I think it's essential to have a dream in order to do that. And finally, um, Thanks, you guys. It's been great to serve with you. Um, it's been nice to get to know you. I feel like I have real friends that I've made on this body, and I look forward to your good work. I have complete confidence um, in the people who will be sitting in these chairs, these new people, and in you um, in making good decisions for this community. And, you know, may the wind be at your back, and may you be wise. Thank you very much, Dr. Selkreg. Ms. Drummond. <laughs> Dan Coffee, <laughs> lawyer, <laughs> land use regulation shark. <laughs> Single toothedly handled Title 21 <laughs> <laughs> from start to finish. <clears throat> Thanks for your service. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no.
You'll get your rebuttal later, Mr. Coffee, but that'll teach you to give out uh, coffee mugs, huh? <laughs> Never argue with a woman. I don't you know that. <laughs> Ms. Johnston. <laughs> is, there, is there more? I'm not done. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> Hello, Sheila Selkrig. <laughs> this is Oscar the Grouch here. Actually, it's goodbye now, isn't it? I came over here in my shiny new dumpster, but I had to leave it in the parking lot without an enclosure or proper screening. <laughs> but that's just as well. It didn't fit through the door, and besides, I know you don't like dumpsters, especially dumpsters, landscaping by dumpsters. <laughs> so I just wore my trusty old garbage can in here to say thank you, Sheila, for all your good work to help make Anchorage a great place to live. And also, I brought along this nice little horsey <laughs> that will live quietly in your East Anchorage condominium that won't require 10,000 square feet of space and won't make a mess. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> You'll be missed. <laughs> and I'm going to miss my colleague in West Anchorage, Matt Clayman. And I'm not doing the puppet work at this end, but you'll know when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Something to look forward to. <laughs> With that, Mrs. Johnston. <laughs> oh, what a hard act to follow. <laughs> I'm uh, not publicly very sappy serpy. But I thought um, I would at least give them some syrupy sap to show my appreciation of my three colleagues for all the work they've done. I, um, it's been an interesting three years. Um, I came on board with Ms. Selkraig and Mr. Clayman. We were all the newbies, and it was actually Mr. Coffey that made me stop calling myself a newbie way before I was ready to. And um, I know that each of these folks have the great, great deal of respect and care for this community. And we each, as citizens and assembly members, appreciate their efforts and have an extreme amount of gratitude for their service. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnston. <coughs> Mr. Gutierrez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to start with Dr. Selkraig and just thank you for many times when there is a debate that is generating more heat than light, being a voice of calmness, uh, a gentle presence. Those are not characteristics that I possess in abundance. And so it's been wonderful to have that um, from you. Mr. Coffey is perhaps one of the, and I know the tapes are running, this is going to come back to haunt me. Mr. Coffey is a brilliant man. I've always thought of you that way. You are one of the most effective assembly members that I have seen since I've been in this town. And I think the body is going to miss that from you. And I have appreciated learning from you, even when we have clashed and not agreed on things, I have always realize that there's a great deal that I have to learn from you and and I know you'll still be around and you'll still be teaching lessons in one form or another so thank you for your service as well <clears throat> now last but not least Ms. Drummond roped me into this <clears throat> well, say a few words about Matt Clayman <laughs> and I'm not going to do any funny voices I'm sorry I just don't have that um, but I, I'm going to start, and I think Ms. Gray Jackson will, will pick up where I stop. But I want to say many thanks to Assemblymember Clayman for his service on the Assembly and his commitment to public safety. Uh, he has been chair of the Public Safety Committee. He has tried very hard to, uh, to help us get more police officers and increase our public safety in a variety of ways, trying so hard to get those academies into the budget. And so... Thank you very much, Matt Clayman. <laughs> Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello, Matt. <laughs> Matt, we are very grateful to you, Matt Clayman, for volunteering with all of those shifts, using your EMT skills to help save lives, and for helping us get that new ambulance <laughs> at the Sand Lake Fire Station to help people all over Anchorage. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. 
<laughs> Truly, um, uh, thank you very much for your service, Matt. I really enjoyed working with you and sitting next to you and um, making, uh, doing what we were elected to do, serve the people in this community. And you've done a fine job and you will be missed. To Dr. Salkrek, who I've known for many, many years, we worked together when you were the planning director for the municipality, and I had great respect for you uh, and your knowledge then, and I have great respect for you now, and the two years that I've served with you, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm honored to have worked with you, Dr. Salkrek, and I, I wish you well. You'll be missed. And to Mr. Coffey. I've known Mr. Coffey for a long time. As a matter of fact, when I was staff for the assembly office, he used to come in my office pretty often, um, getting uh, my staff to do, at the request of an assembly member, quickie resolutions for um, agenda items that were going to be before the assembly that same evening. And, and I enjoyed doing that, Mr. Coffey. I really did. Um, as a matter of fact, I enjoyed serving with you on this uh, assembly. And I wish that we had had the opportunity to work more closely together, but I am grateful for um, a few, few projects that we worked together on. So thank you, Mr. Coffey. I wish you well, and you'll be missed, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ms. Gray Jackson. Mr. Clayman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think as all of you have heard me say many times that serving on this body, we are engaged in a common endeavor. And that's a common endeavor to make this community a better place to live, work, and raise our families. And we come here with 11 different views. And that's, as Mr. Birch correctly notes, that's why I start each meeting with a handshake. I learned it from a Supreme Court justice. And it's to recognize that we really are engaged in a common endeavor and that, that we are moving this community forward when we do that. We also celebrate tonight um, the American system of democracy. And I know two of my colleagues are departing this body by their own choice. I, in contrast, am de departing this body by the choice of a, a few thousand voters who decided that uh, I needed to go find something else to do. And I respect their choice. But it's also a peaceful transition. We, we only need to look at the newspaper at least once or twice, if not more times a year, and we see places that they're fighting in armed conflict to decide who's going to be in charge of government. And even as a person who lost an election, I have such tremendous respect for these democratic principles um, that I, I honor them even as a person who has lost an election. I want to specifically thank my colleagues because much of this is about uh, serving the public interest in figuring out legislation and finding compromises to move the community forward. But what I discover sitting up here is all of us who have faced the electorate, uh, we have some common bonds of having been judged by the electorate. and, and I particularly treasure the personal relationships I've developed. Mr. Birch, um, you know, one of the things I learned about you is the great pride you have in your family. And I've got to know, I think, all everyone in your family in different ways. I see your son in the office building where I work. I was really privileged to participate in the swearing-in of, swearing of your daughter to the Alaska Bar Association. And you're the assembly member I see at the health clubs in town more than anyone else, with one exception, and that's your wife. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's a, that's a personal bond that means a lot. Ms. Johnston, um, similarly, one of the, the first places where we really got connected was, was a really great uh, up and over hike from Girdwood over to the 20 Mile River. And, and one of the things I remember is, and I think everyone knows Jennifer Johnston is the always prepared outdoors woman. And that certainly was how the, how the trip started. But, for those that have done some whitewater boating, she's better on her feet than in a boat, and she managed to turn her boat over. And, and uh, about a, an hour and a half towards the end of the trip, we were on the beach trying to jump around and warm up, and she joined a large group of people who've been on trips with me where they, they look cold and unhappy, and they ask if I've got any extra clothes in my bag that I could loan her. And I was very pleased to loan her a hat that didn't fit perfectly, but she looked a lot warmer for the experience. And these are the kinds of memories that, that we build on this body, regardless of the political perspective that we bring to it. Uh, Mr. Gutierrez, one of the things I have learned about you is that your passion for this city is only exceeded by one thing, and that's your passion for sports. 
<laughs> and, and in my efforts to meet with people outside meetings for lunch or dinner or other things, the, the greatest challenge was always figuring out when you were going to beat the Aces games. I wasn't sure if that was helping Mr. Coffey's ownership interest or your own passion for the game, but I realized it was your passion for the game. There was always scheduling around the Olympics and, and Aces games, and, and that really told me a lot about who you are and your passion for the city. Dr. Selkraig. Uh, you know, Dr. Selkraig and I have served in public service together for longer than anyone else on this body because of our service together on the, Bar, uh, the Alaska Bar Association Board of Governors. And one of the things I learned about Dr. Selkraig, Selkraig is she is a woman of great courage. Um, two of the things that really struck me, I was, I was, uh, we were serving together when her son died. And I know that was a tremendous loss uh, that at some level she'll never get over. And I, you know, I always think about that loss uh, that she has had to live with. And also the great success of your daughter uh, as one of the great writers in our country and in our city that brings such a great perspective. And I know the pride that you bring with your family to the service you have to this community. Ms. Osiander. Um, now, there's the passion for Title 21 that few will understand except those that serve on this body. And, and that's kind of on the professional side. But on the personal side, when I joined the body, people said, well, you know, if you really want to see W.O. Sander, you really have to go to Eagle River. And I didn't completely believe that. What I, what, what I discovered that the time I had lunch with W.O. Sander, I had to go to Eagle River. And, and I learned a lot from going there. I learned a lot about Eagle River that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. But I also really got a real sense both of not only her commitment to the community, but that ahead of the community, she always put her family. And those are values that, that I think we all share. Mr. Starr, uh, one of the habits that I, that I had as chair was to always call everyone the weekend before the assembly meeting to, to touch base to see if there were any particular issues. And again, recognizing your commitment both to your faith and to your family, I, I learned quickly, although I'm not sure I fully learned the lesson because I kept calling on Sunday and never getting an answer. <laughs> Don't call Bill Starr on Sundays because he's, he's, he has got other commitments that take, take priority over the work uh, of the assembly on Sundays. And so that's something I really learned and, and a deeper respect for you as a product of that. Ms. Gray Jackson, yeah, you came on this body with the reputation as the best cook in town. and. Alan Tesh used to say to me, you need to tell Elvie Gray Jackson that there's more than one person in town that can cook a good dinner. <laughs> and and uh, in the lesson of try to show but don't tell, I, I was pleased that she even deigned to come and eat at our house and, and found the food not quite up to the standard that we had at her house, but good food nonetheless. Uh, and that really helped bond. And, and she's somebody that's up late, and, and I can't tell you how many 11 o'clock conversations we had on the phone trying to work out some details on legislation. So again, thank you, Elvie Gray Jackson. Mr. Coffey, uh, you know, one of the things we, we figured out early on was that we could really build a, a friendship and a way to work through issues on the golf course. That was something I didn't necessarily have a lot of experience with before, but, but you were a, a great uh, guide in that process. And, and not only was it a, always a pleasure to go play golf and figuring out some of the issues that we needed to address. But it's a great place to uh, mend relationships, too. And the thing I can look forward to as we both leave this body is that anytime you have an early morning tea time, call me up, because I'll be there. <laughs> um, and Ms. Drummond, you know, one of the great parts about having you in West Anchorage is, is the ability to carpool together, ride together. And you know, we, we rode together to more community council meetings and back from assembly meetings than I would begin to count. And the great, greatest thing about that was that we could always count on talking about both assembly matters and personal matters, almost shifting from one topic to the next as, with, with barely a, a breath in between. And so I learned so much about your family and, and again, your deep care for your family and, and all that Elston brings to the community in, in terms of vibrant and thoughtful opinions. So again, I will miss all those opportunities to work together. And finally, Mr. Flynn, when I joined this body, I was the youngest uh, person on the assembly. And the mayor was younger than I am, as was the governor. And I am pleased that in leaving the body, I believe you are the youngest <laughs> member of the body. I'm pleased that, that you are the chair of this body and that as I leave, the chair of the assembly is younger than I am. I'm particularly pleased that you bring have brought 
although no longer with the railroad, kind of a railroad man's perspective. And I guess at the top of the list in the world of family, you have brought a new generation onto this, into this city during the course of your service. And that, that's just a really, that's just great stuff. So I can't say enough about that. Um, I have a, a small piece of, piece of advice to the members of the assembly in leaving. Uh, we have a strong mayor form of government in this community. And I, I would go so far as to say of having served as your mayor, I probably understand that in ways that I wouldn't have on the assembly had I never served as your mayor. We do have a strong mayor form of government, but it is only as strong as the assembly will allow it to be. So exercise your authority as the city's legislature with care and caution, and uh, don't let the mayor bowl you over. My three years of service on this body have been a privilege to serve on this body, to serve as chair of this assembly, and to serve as mayor of this great city. Throughout my service, I have remained committed to what is best for our community, and I have always endeavored to make decisions with that commitment first and foremost. And in the days, months, and years ahead, I shall remain steadfast in my commitment to this community. In a lifetime of public service, my service as an elected public official have been some of the best times I can remember. I have learned more than I can recount, and I have made my share of mistakes. And I have done all that I can to help move this community forward. So with that, I thank you all for this opportunity to serve. May God bless this city, this great state, and this great country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Clayman. Mr. Starr. Well, not to be rude, my personal policy is that I don't say anything other than Godspeed to those departing. I look forward to working with those that are here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Starr. Ms. Osiander. I'll be a little more wordy. <laughs> <laughs> it's you interesting when you serve on an elective body because you do really get to know the people that you serve, but in sort of a filtered way in that all the relationships are so tinged by the discussions and the issues that sometimes you see things in people that other people don't see and appreciate strengths sometimes that other people don't, don't see. Um, Mr. Clayman, I remember vividly the first time I met you. I was at the Bartlett Democratic Club, and we started talking about Title 21 right then. I want to thank you for your service to the city. You have clearly put your values in your life in the job as you went into it, which I appreciate, though at times I admit to a certain degree of frustration. <laughs> I thank you, too, for your analytical approach and your ability to listen. I thank you for that. Sheila, we have spent a lot of time together, and it's interesting because it seems, though, even if we have really divergent opinions, we can listen to each other. And I truly believe now that you and I are friends, and we're going to be friends for a long time. You are a really warm, caring person. It's been a privilege and a joy to get to know you better. Thank you, Sheila. Dan, you are the guy that when all else fails and I think we're not going to come to any kind of a solution, you've been able to work things out. And I thank you for that. I also really thank you for um, your, your service to the city on just a number of fronts. I am so relieved that you're going to continue to have some say, and I can still call you up and squawk, Coffee, what about this? Mm. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Ozeander. Mr. Coffee. You know, it's the, it's the best of jobs, and it's the worst of jobs. And we, we live it. Uh, you don't ever get away from it. You, you, you're you an assembly person, and you're engaged literally every day of the week. And uh, that's fine. That's part of what it is. It also wears on you after a time. Uh, but it's a very important job. And, and one of the things that I hope is that people from all walks of life here will step up and, and take a shot at this and trying to do it, run for office and so on. Because if that doesn't happen, we're all diminished. We need to have the whole of the city represented and all aspects and all views and all sorts of different ideas come forward here. This is the best place for government in the whole wide world. We've got to look out at our constituents every single day 
both here and then on TV and on the streets and in the restaurants and on the ball fields and everywhere else you go, and that's fine by me. It makes us accountable in ways that they, I don't think they ever see it in Juneau and Washington, D.C. We are really accountable to our, our constituents, and that's a good thing. Um, three of my uh, sons are here, Ryan, Kevin, and Shane. They're in about the fourth row there. Um, they were they're older when I got on here, old enough, you know, in college and out of high school and stuff. Um, I have an 11-year-old at home. I'm the oldest member of the assembly. I'm 63. I have an 11-year-old, so that makes it a little different. We're going to enjoy our time off from that, from this, from public life. Uh, and my wife, bless her, she and uh, Edward are in Seattle, and they're at a, actually at a Mariners baseball game, and I hope to join them very soon. Um, to all my colleagues, thank you. Each and every one of us comes here, and what we want to do is we want to serve the public and serve our city as we best see it. And boy, I'll tell you, we can disagree. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> but sometimes, only rarely, do we become disagreeable. We disagree. We disagree with passion and, and so on. And of course, we slip over into the things that we sort of regret sometimes. But mostly, we respect one another, and we treat one another with respect and with collegiality, and that is a really important thing. The last thing that I would say here is what, uh, what drove me and what still drives me in doing this is there is a public trust that comes to us by virtue of the fact that we are elected officials. And we have to be very careful because if we lose that public trust by actions or inactions, then the system that we're so proud of and that Mr. Clayman spoke about and that we all know and, and respect, the system of elected officials, elected citizen officials, that will go away. And that would be a real loss to our town, our city, our state, and our, and our country. Um, you can't put the personal interest above the public interest. And I think of the things we've done to make sure that we don't. And I think about Mr. Stout's role when he wrote the ethics bill and all the, the three years he put into that. And I think about all the other things, you know, our disclosures. Sometimes it's almost ludicrous, the things we say. Well, I had a third cousin who once upon a time, and but it, it, what it shows to the public is we're trying to be open and above board about what we're doing here, and, and those are real crucial. And then the other thing that I really like is the basic trust for one another. Disagreements, different beliefs, different views aside, when any one of you tells me this, that, or the other thing, I can, I can trust it and I can take it to the bank. You may tell me no, you may tell me yes, you may tell me maybe, but it's where you're coming from with a high degree of honesty and respect for my positions and mine for yours, and that also makes this a fine body to serve on. So I have enjoyed it thoroughly. It's my oldest son's birthday. We're taking, we're going out to dinner tonight, and I wish you all the very best at the end of the evening, and I will bid you all a very fond adieu. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coffey. Mr. Mayor. I'll, uh, I would defer to you first, Mr. Chairman, if you wanted to speak. or <laughs> You go right ahead. I have a small thing to do after that. Thank, thank you me. very much. Well, thank you. And I uh, just wanted to say, obviously, thank you for the public service that the outgoing members have shown to their community. I was recounting, I think uh, people probably heard me say it more than once, but I think I served with 24 different assembly members over nine years. And it's always a body that is in transition, which makes it uh, obviously very interesting and at the same time, uh, sometimes hard to point fingers at the assembly, which assembly, the one from last year, the year before. It's, it's constantly changing. And again, I think that brings always new, fresh viewpoints into the body. And I think that's a healthy process. Mr. Clayman and I have had an interesting relationship. I've known him as long as I've known uh, uh, Dr. Selkraig and Mr. Coffey. We first met as opponents running for the assembly. And so you start off with what really is naturally an adversarial relationship because you're competing for the same job. And, and then two years later, we were colleagues on the assembly. And then certainly, as everyone knows, he preceded me in this position. So we've had an interesting dynamic, Mr. Clayman, and uh, you bring a level of intelligence and calm rationality to the body that uh, I think everybody appreciated. And good luck on your future endeavors. Dr. Selkraig and I have known each other since uh, we were really kids, and she was a lot older, but I was... Uh, um, <laughs> I, I looked up to her as a big sister. That was it, yeah. And, um, but uh, and every, every, even back in those days, and, uh, uh, you know, there's probably nobody who loves this community more than Dr. Selkraig. I can truly say that. And you bring that with every issue, with every bit of passion, every bit of heart, 
And I think this body really appreciated the heart you bring to the city of Anchorage, and uh, that will be missed as well. Uh, Mr. Coffey and I have known each other many, many years. Our, our first I met him, we were both working in the warehouses of Anchorage Cold Storage in the late 60s. He was putting himself through law school, and I was uh, putting myself through grade school. And, um, and so, okay, first year of college or two. But, uh, but even then, what was amazing about Mr. Coffey, and I'll remember this as, as, you know, as clear as a bell from 40-some years ago, he would walk around that warehouse with a hand truck, whistling and happy to be where he was. And most people, they go to a job like that, which is sometimes was brutal physical work, and he always went about it happy. And he brings that same sort of passion to whether it's politics or whether it's going to a Mariners game. If he likes what he's doing, it just is effusive. And uh, I think the body has really benefited from that attitude, and, and it brings a spirit of cooperation. You just naturally, I think, gravitate people to you uh, because of that attitude and, and combine that, of course, with your experience. Uh, a very, very valuable member of this body, and as somebody else, Mr. Gutierrez, mentioned, I think uh, probably if we had to have a Hall of Fame of Assembly members, uh, I would nominate you. So for all of you, uh, good luck on your future endeavors, and I enjoyed working with you. For the new members coming in, look forward to working you, with you as well. We've got a, an opportunity. Where there's, there's challenges all over this country regarding fiscal responsibility and budgets and how do you get back into, into you know, doing things the right way and make, making sure that uh, the city is healthy going forward. And so I look forward to working with the new members as well. That's a big challenge, uh, but we're up to it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll try and keep my comments brief and have a couple of small tokens of our appreciation for our departing members. Uh, as a couple of folks have alluded to, service on, on any public body brings a certain level of camaraderie you don't find anywhere else. It's not entirely dissimilar from the Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, <laughs> and as we've, and we've discussed uh, regarding Dr. Selkraig, you know there's a lot of passion involved in public service, and people really care about our community, and uh, as the mayor mentioned, probably no one more than you. But with that passion, you always brought a sense of compassion to this body, and for that, I am truly appreciative. Um, the University of Alaska is very lucky to have a little bit more of your time now. Um, we're sure we're going to see some great ideas coming from your students that we can consider as we move our community forward. And I just ask that you come forward to accept a little plaque of appreciation from the Assembly for your service. <laughs> Mr. Clayman, if there is a record for the wildest three-year ride in office, you win hands down. You had the honor of serving as a member of this body, as the public safety chairman, as the chair of this body, as our acting mayor, and then back to the body as a member and chairman of the public safety committee. Um, I learned quite a bit from you. I appreciate your wisdom, your thoughtfulness, your level-headedness. And on Tuesday evenings that are sunny this summer, I'll be thinking of you as I'm sitting here, and you are tearing up the trails on your road bike, I am sure. Mr. Koch, Mr. Clayman, please come forward. Thank you very much for your service, sir. Well, Mr. Coffey, I could guess offer you the same advice, uh, or offer Mr. Clayman the same advice I'll give you, which is, <clears throat> as Mom used to say, remember, Retirement is twice as much husband for half as much money. <laughs> Listen to what Pauline tells you. <laughs> um, I would just say, Mr. Coffey, we have worked together in ways I never expected since uh, I arrived in this body. You have always shown an instinct toward working to the middle, finding common ground, finding solutions. That's a lesson I think all of us can benefit from moving forward. I thank you very much for your service and our time together. Thank, thank you. Lord. You know, uh, when I first came around here, his mother was on this body, so I've come full circle. <laughs> well, that brings us to special orders. Next up, could our uh, Municipal Elections Commission come forward? That's you folks in the third row.
My name is Ethel Tuck. I'm the chairman. This is Evelyn Hansen. She's the vice chair. Norma Sullivan, Jean Abel, uh, Barbara Mishler is getting up, and James Stevens is our uh, alternate, and he just uh, came in and helped out tremendously this year and learned a lot, I think. <laughs> okay. Do I look nervous? I'm done. That's okay. You're doing fine. <laughs> Okay, um, we took in a total uh, absentee envelopes of 2,328. Question envelopes was 1,480. Our mail before and after the election was 1,231 for a count of 5,045. We actually counted uh, 2,312 absentee envelope or ballots and three uh, one thousand three hundred sixty seven question and the mail was one thousand one hundred and ninety. There was a total rejection of one hundred and seventy six envelopes. Sixteen of them was with the absentee, one hundred and nineteen question and forty one mail. So that's it was a good process. It, uh, very small election, but it was good. We had a good year. Very good. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Jacqueline? Madam Deputy Clerk? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm on the other side. <laughs> we wanted to give Ethel and Evelyn because they're leaving so sad some flowers. So. <laughs> Thank you for your service, ladies. Okay. So there's some things that I need to read into the record. And the first one being the incident that occurred at 535. So the first incident uh, was the fact that ballots were cast in the wrong section. What happened was um, the precinct chairperson issue, ha, did not take the uh, map out of her car did not issue the correct ballots the entire day, therefore resulting in a total of 6,497 votes, of which 3,104 went to Trini, 415 went to Whitaker, 2,930 went to Clary, and 48 were a write-in. The situation was easy to correct because there was no assembly race occurring in section one. So each ballot was essentially the same, except for the assembly race. So no one was disenfranchised in this situation. Is there any questions when it comes to 535 on the assembly? Ms. Osteen has a question. What, what can we do to prevent it in the future? Uh, we've had extensive conversations about this. Um, because split sections are going to go away soon, uh, that will help. But otherwise, we're going to do a lot more color coding. We're going to try to color code the ballot to the map. Uh, right now, we number the ballot to the map, but we're going to do more of that. We're also going to take training a step forward. We're going to train chair people separately from the actual election workers. So that's never been done before either. So when you say split districts are going away, you mean with redistricting after the census? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. You, I think the clerk will just, just speak to this, but I think you may recall, Ms. Ossian, or the uh, Citizens of Anchorage approved a charter amendment uh, passed eight yeah, years ago? 2007. 2007. Um, that allows municipal redistricting to follow state redistricting, redistricting yeah. so we can follow their precinct lines. Right. No, I right. know. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to add to that, Ms. Clark? No, Ms. Clark? it's fine. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Duke, please continue. Okay. The second thing that I would like to uh, read is we have a lot of versa seats, and this year there were 10 that no one uh, ran for, so it resulted in only write-ins. Because of this, we're going to actually ask for a motion to exclude those from tonight's certification. I so move. Okay. There, and second. I need a second, please. Second. 
Okay. Let's. I've, I've been advised by the clerk that we need to make that motion after we complete action on the uh, uh, original, the so, underlying election. So. I just. I just wanted to finish telling you what's going to happen. We want to review those ballots, determine who are the eligible candidates among those, because sometimes there's seven. There's a large variety of people that were written in. We have to make sure they're eligible, that there's no tiebreakers, and then we'll bring those races back to the assembly for certification. Thank you, Ms. Duke. Any further questions on that item? Okay. I wanted to thank everyone for your support. This year was uh, a lot of fun. I had a blast, and I had some awesome people helping me in the clerk's office. And I would like to thank Pamela, Amanda, uh, Shayla, Barbara, all the assembly members for your support, and especially the commission. They were amazing, and I'm really sad to be losing some of them. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Duke. I'd like to add my thanks to the commission and my uh, sorrow to, leave, to lose Ethel and Evelyn. They've been great, but we've got a great team that has learned a lot. I, I think the public doesn't have a clue what the election commission goes through. It's, it's an amazing amount of very tedious work, and they do it well. They do it with good cheer and with good food, and they're just um, we great thanks to you all. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ray Jackson has a comment before you run off. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank the Commission, too, for doing a really great job. And Ethel, I've known you for a long time, and I'm really going to miss you. Um, stay in touch, please. Thank you, everyone. And I'd also like to thank uh, the, the clerk's office and, and her staff for um, doing the best job that they could. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Gray Jackson. Mr. Clayman. I, too, want to thank the Commission for your incredibly hard work. I know there's, so there's some volunteer positions for the city that are kind of spread out with little bits and pieces during the course of the year. Yours is uh, very little for a long portion of the year, and then all of a sudden you're busy night days, nights, days, and weekends, and, and I really appreciate the time you put in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate your service. Thank you. Mr. Gutierrez. Mr. Chairman, I move to certify the 2010 municipal election. I move and seconded. And then I need a second motion, Mr. Gutierrez. Mr. Chairman, I would move to exclude the LURSAs from that certification. The, the ten, the ten write-in the ten write-in only candidate. Yes. Thank you. Good. Moved and seconded. Is there objection to the motion to exclude the LURSAs for which we only had write-in candidates pending additional certification work? Could I? I'm, Ms. Osiander? I'm sorry. I was trying to figure out which ones those are. Oh, uh, if, you, if you look at the sheet, you have write-in votes only in, for example, the Sequoia Estates. I can read them. I oh. know which ones they are. Okay, if you'd be kind enough, Ms. Duke. Okay. The first one will be Bear Valley Lursa Seat A, Birch Tree Elmore Lursa Seat C, Mount Park Estates Lursa Seat B, Lake Hill Lursa Seat A, Paradise Valley South Lursa Seat A, Sequoia Estates Lursa Seat D, SRW Homeowners Lursa Seat A, Upper Grover Lursa Seat B, Upper Grover Lursa Seat C, Valley View Lursa Seat C, and that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Gutierrez. I, I apologize. Uh, I, the question popped into my head after Ms. Duke sat down. But, uh, Madam Clerk, what happens if the winning write-in candidate should say, yeah, I don't want to serve? What's the process that we go through? Then? The mayor points it up. I, I believe that's what happens. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. With that, is there any objection to uh, excluding the write-in LURSAs from our certification this evening? Seeing and hearing none, that uh, amendment to the, adoption, uh, to the motion is approved. With that, is there objection to adopt the certification of the April 6 election results? Seeing and hearing none, that election is certified. That brings us to the exciting part, the oath of office. We are honored by Supreme Court Justice Morgan Christian being with us this evening. Ma'am, if you'd come down, and if our three winning candidates, Mr. Honeman, Mr. Hall, and Mr. Train, if you'd please come forward. And Ms. Johnson and Ms. Osteander, sorry. <laughs> the folks that are already up here. Thank you.
All set? Straighten your ties, because they're going to take your picture. <laughs> All right. Please raise your right hands and repeat after me. I swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Alaska and the Charter of the Municipality of Anchorage and I will perform my duties as an assembly person for the municipality of Anchorage to the best of my ability. Congratulations. We're going to take a, real, a brief break here, probably about 15 or 20 minutes, while we do some sign switching among others. We're meeting back to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll anew? Mr. Traney. Here, ma'am. Ms. Osiander. Mr. Starr. Here. Mr. Hall. Here. Ms. Gray Jackson? Honored to be here. Mr. Gutierrez? Here. Mr. Flynn? Present. Ms. Johnston? Here. Ms. Drummond? Here. Mr. Honeman? Here. Mr. Birch? Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you very a much. A new quorum. A new quorum. Very good. Uh, that brings us to the final item on our agenda, assembly reorganization. Uh, for the benefit of the audience, after every useful election, we reorganize the assembly. With that, I'll recognize Mr. Honeman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, reorganize, uh, nominate for chair Mr. Traney in Midtown, Anchorage. Second. Could you push a pressure button, Mr. Honeman? Thank you very much. Are there any further nominations? Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move and nominate uh, Debbie Osiander. Thank you, Mr. Birch. Is there a second? Could you press a button, sir? Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Seeing and hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you kindly distribute the paper ballots for voting? Madam Clerk. Mr. Chairman and body, the, the vote content is three for Osiander and eight for Traney. Mr. Traney, congratulations.
the original one, by the way. We'll talk about that one. Huh? Yes, it's coming back. <laughs> it is. Okay, let's see if I can actually get this thing to work. As we know, Barbara, I'm used to a manual system. We can go manual if we need to, because <laughs> we always had a problem with the system not working correctly. Anyway, uh, next time in business is the vice chairman. Mr. Chair. And what we need is a name going forward. Mr. I, Drummond. I uh, nominate Mr. Flynn for vice chair. Moved and seconded for Mr. Flynn. Is there any other nomination? Ms. Osiander. Nominate Mr. Hall. Second. It's moved and seconded for Mr. Hall. Okay, so see Andrew and who else? Is there anybody else? No. no um, okay. Seeing no one, Madam Clerk, please pass the ballots out. Thank you. I appreciate the training lesson because, believe me, I'll need it. Mr. Chairman, the count is three for Mr. Hall and eight for Mr. Flynn. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Flynn. Barbara told me don't reminisce, look forward. Okay. Um, I appreciate your confidence. We're going to move forward. And quite frankly, I need to talk to each one of you, and I'll call you to come in and see me, because I want to talk about what you want to accomplish on this body. And I don't view us as progressives or conservatives or moderates. I view it as one united assembly. And I really pledge to work to that point, because I want us to all enjoy being here, not just on the day when we part, but the entire time we're on here. Because I worked some great people on this assembly, you know, and some that aren't with us anymore. I remember Joe Murdy, just had such a great spirit on being here, and my good friend Alan. These are people that spent their time here, spent their life here, and we can't be friends just on the last day when we give people gifts and, you know, have a happy life. I want us to be friends working here. So if you've got an issue with me, please call me and let's sit down and talk about it. And you may need to get a big hammer because I have a thick head. <laughs> But we're going to work well together. And like I said, this next week I'll be calling you because I really want to sit down and go over the programs we've got, the different committees, liaisons. I want to figure out what you want to do. And I need to know what type of legislation you want to see come to, to this dais so we can work on it together. So we don't have people that are fighting over their own points of view. Sometimes we may disagree on, or, on 
resolutions or ordinances. But you know, when it's all said and done, the next time a different ordinance comes through, I want us to all work together because the program and configuration changes on the topic in front of us. So I look forward to working with each one of you. And Mr. Flynn, I'm going to have fun working with you. I worked with your mother. I was thinking earlier when they were reminiscing about Heather here. When I first came on the assembly, Heather was sitting next to me. And your mom has these great, had these great little slippers, bunny rabbit slippers. And she would put the slippers on and some fangs in her mouth, wax fangs. And you knew not to mess with Heather. So I look forward to working with you. It's great to have you here. Any comments? I welcome you back, Mr. Traney. I welcome Mr. Honeman and Mr. Hall. I'm looking forward to us all working together, starting, I believe, at 9 o'clock on Friday when we have our first new assembly work session. Good. Elvie, you're on the queue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to say welcome back, Mr. Co um, Mr. Traney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're doing a lot of channeling. <laughs> I'm not quite ready for it yet. <laughs> And, and thank you for your comments, and congratulations to you and to our Vice Chair, Mr. Flynn. And um, I'm looking forward to working with um, everyone here and doing what's right for the people that live in this community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And we look forward to working with the Mayor. Mr. The Mayor and I worked together for a long time. So it's going to be fine. I'm going to have to get used to calling you the Mayor because I was used to calling you Dan. Now I've got to call you the Mayor. It's going to be fun, Dan, working with you. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're down now to audience uh, unfinished agenda. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm in the queue. Okay. I just I want to say. I'm not used to this system. I'll get there by the next meeting. First and foremost, I, I did want to say to Mr. Flynn, thank you very much. I enjoyed working with you as your vice chair. It was a lot of fun. Mr. Chairman, I'm ecstatic and very excited about you and Mr. Hall and Mr. Honeman joining this body. I think we're going to get a lot of great work done. Very happy to, to have you and Mr. Flynn in those chairs, and I think we are well represented. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've got a couple of items that just showed up. This is for you, sir. A gavel representing the chairman of the Anchorage Assembly. Thank you, sir. Start collecting them. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gutierrez. Mike was staff a few years ago, and Alan Tesh and I were on the assembly, and we left the assembly, and Mike was elected, and he always missed working with us. So I'm going to hold you to that because I'm back. <laughs> we're going to have fun with this, Mike. I, we, we're going to enjoy each other. Madam Chair, uh, we're now down to unfinished agenda. If anybody wants to talk to us about any item not on the agenda, please come forward. You've got three minutes. Seeing no one, then we're down to um, assembly comments. I want to see if there's any comments. Mike, anything? Not at this time, Mr. Chairman. Debbie? Bill? Ernie? Elvie? Just really quickly, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank um, Mr. Flynn for his tenure as uh, chair of the assembly. You did a fine job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. Harriet, anything? Excited to be here, ready to work with every one of you. Thank you. Mr. Birch? We're adjourned. <laughs>